And today we're going to talk about the strategy to calculate accurate estimates. To me, one of the top keys to success is accuracy. The estimator's number one goal has to be accuracy. Tired of seeing contractors who bid at 25% and only make 15 or 12, or bid at 20 and make more. Right? To me, that's not accurate. Improving your bid is great, but it means your, your bidding strategy is off and you're not accurate. I've got like seven or eight ideas. Let me just walk you through them. Number one, we've got to set some goals. What's your accuracy goal within one or two or 3% of the budget, especially for labor and equipment? We've got to track your labor and equipment hours, bid versus actual. And then we've got to make sure there's no missed items or activities or trades or inclusions, exclusions that you forgot in your bid. So we want to adjust our bid template to include all the things that we sometimes miss. Uh, and then we want to uh, obviously have no misses in no uh, overruns and no margin shrinkage and profit adios and all those kinds of things. Number two, we want to calculate specific markup for the specific job and specific general conditions. I don't like uh, general conditions, you know, supervision, project management, cleanup, all those kinds of things to be used as a percentage. It literally, if you, it only takes a few minutes to calculate really good general conditions if you set up your template properly. So we want to have a clear template with our project management, supervision, vehicles for them, uh, with how many hours, weeks, months it's going to take for each one of those based on, you know, are they full-time, part-time, half-time, whatever they are. Uh, and then our temporary facilities, you know, office, toilets, uh, utilities, uh, cell phones, electric, water, all those kinds of things. And then, of course, we need temporary protection. We might need fencing, security, uh, lights, uh, guards, and then cleanup and trash. Obviously, that's a big deal. And lastly, we need a specific amount of money for mobilization. You know, your move-on costs, your move-off costs, temporary things you might need to move people on and off or to get across ditches, etc. Third thing is we need to maintain an updated, detailed estimating template. You've got to have a basic template with basic cost codes and line items and trades and all the things you're going to need included in the bid based on what's on the plans and what's included in the contract. And so we set up our template, whether it's an Excel or whether you buy a, a complete integrated software package that specializes in estimating, we still got to set up our template line by line in order from A to Z, one to 2000 using the Construction Specification Institute CSI cost codes. We lay them down the left side of the page and we build our spreadsheet across cost code, item, quantity, unit price, bid, total, right? And if you need a sample template, I do have an estimating template included, several of them, for different kinds of projects in my new hard hat template package, my Biz Builder bundle. So you might want to check it out on my website, hardhatbizcoach.com. It's available. Take it, download it, implement it into your business. Number four. Uh, we want to increase and regularly update our subcontractor material supplier database. So we want to continually improve, enhance, upgrade, expand our database of subcontractors and suppliers, especially if you're growing. If you're a smaller contractor, you probably have two or three, one or two subcontractors per trade. As you grow, you know, they may not be able to keep up with you. If you go from a million dollar job to a $5 million job, you probably need a different list of subcontractors. And so there's bid solicitation software that you can get that's relatively reasonably priced that you put all your subcontractors in there uh, in every trade. And then when you have a job to bid, you send out an email that uh, to the selected subcontractors that you choose for that particular job based on their specialties and qualifications. And so then our goal is to solicit min minimum two, three, four, even as many as five bids and suppliers per trade or per item so that we continually stay competitive. Now, obviously, if, if you want to use your, your friendly sub subcontractors that you like to work with, you can continue and just get one or two bids. But as you grow, you're going to find that that's maybe not going to make you as competitive as you need to be. So it's your choice how you run your business. Number five, so we're going to bid the job now. We've decided to bid the job. That's a whole other strategy, which jobs to bid. But we decide to bid the job. 
So we have a turnover meeting. We have a turnover meeting from decision to, yes, we're going to bid. And during that discussion period, we decide, you know, who should bid it, which subcontractors we need, uh, which markup we want to use, and we set up the job for bid and a deadline. Well, first of all, we have to send out the request for bid to the list, and then we have to check it every day to make sure they're actually going to bid it so you don't end up with a hole in your bid on bid day. That's the worst thing that can happen. So we continually update it, review it. If you have an estimating assistant, you meet with them every day, go through who, who do we need to call? Who do I need to personally convince to bid the job because it's so important to us? And we we reach out to those trades we need. And then we finally get the bid start coming in and we put it in some sort of a, what I call a quote comparison spreadsheet. And then three or four days out, we, we meet with a, the, the president, the owner, the senior estimator and review our bid draft. And then of course, bid day, we we all work together to diligently get the best bid we can and not miss anything and, and get all the right subcontractors and suppliers to bid the job. Number six, we want to make sure our labor and equipment is tracked and bid by quantity per hour, not per square foot or lineal foot, quantity per hour. So if I'm a concrete contractor, how many hours of worker does it take to finish 10,000 square feet? or a square foot. It might take two man hours per lineal foot, square foot, unit price, cubic yard. So we want to track labor and equipment by work quantity per crew hours. And then at the end of the job, we want to check it to see how good our bid is. And so that takes us to our last point, maintain an updated cost history library. So when the jobs are finished, we sit down with the project manager, maybe the superintendent or the foreman, and we walk through all the labor and equipment hours what what was good, what was bad, where did I go over, where did I go under? So then I can adjust my cost history and my labor and equipment production rates. And so I can keep zoning in on a more accurate bid. Uh, so next time I'll be closer and closer to that two or three or 4% goal, right? So when we're all done, we have a pretty good estimating template, which we can use for years and years to come. And uh, I, for myself, I created an estimating template when they first came out with Lotus 123, 20, 30 years ago, whatever it was. And uh, I still use the same template today. And uh, I've adjusted it to new later software and takeoff uh, equipment, et cetera, and, and uh, all sorts of things to make it better. But that's what I would highly recommend. So if I can help you, and if you'd like a copy of my estimating templates, I have a bid template. I have a conceptual estimate of small job, commercial jobs. If you're interested, uh, check out my website, hardhatbizcoach.com, or send me an email, and I would be glad to send you in the right direction to help you get your estimating accurate.